Hello and welcome to chapter 10, configure and secure SSH. Okay, so without further ado, let's go to our terminals. Okay, so I have been using SSH th throughout most of these chapters because it's co more comfortable and easier to me. But I'm pretty sure that most of you guys know what SSH is at this point in time. But anyways, here it goes for the ones who don't. So SSH, it's a remote, a remote access protocol. So this allows us to be able to connect to remote machines so we can configure them remotely in a safely fashion. So SSH is encrypted, which means that it's safe to use. So to connect to remote machines and issue commands uh, accordingly. Uh, of course, we need to be careful and not to be over little sellers. They have some, some care about, about the use of SSH, of course. But for the most part, it should be safe enough to use in most situations. Of course, you, you need to take care, some precautions, not to use it. But for the most part, it should be a okay to use. Now, how, do I, how, how can you access a Linux machine to another Linux machine? Well, it's not that hard. It's, it's actually... Um, Quite simple. We'll just do SSH and specify afterwards either the IP address or the host name of the um, of the uh, remote machine you want to connect to. Okay. So in simple terms, so you just need to go to your destination machine, the one you the one you want to connect to, find out its its IP address. I'm going to use a command called IPA. Don't worry too much about this because networking is chapter eleven. The next one, like and subscribe to get notified. And I just need to find out the IP address I want to use. And I just need to type in the IP address. The first time I, I connect, it's going to ask me to save the fingerprint. Fingerprint is like the ID of the machine you want to connect to in your own, like a, a relationship. Let's say yes. And it's going to ask me the password for the root user that I'm using to connect. And I'm going to type the password and I am going to fail. Uh, I will just type the passwords a couple of a few uh, an extra time more, and it should fail and just uh, well you will just fall back to Rocky One. Why? Because by default the root user cannot connect to remote machines. Okay. Again, that's the regarding that security thing I discussed. Even though SSH it's quite safe, it's not one hundred percent safe. So by default, we cannot connect from, from the, to the root user of the remote machine because the password then will just go flying by. It, it should be safe, but uh, in recent times, it's, 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 it's recommended to, to, not, to not to do so. So we just need to get yourselves another user. For example, the student user. I just do SSH to the remote machine. Oops. Let me get the IP address here. Since it's a the, the different user, I will have to, have to resave the, the fingerprint, type in the user's password, and now I am successfully logged in. So the root user cannot, by default, I will show how can we just, uh, I mean, overwrite that, but by default, we cannot use the root user to connect to remote machines just because of safe, safe measure. Once I am connected, of course, I can just become the root user using my preferred method, and well, now, yeah. Now it's my fault because I just mistyped the password, but that's just 100% my fault. Yeah, you know the password for the root user, big deal. Okay, cool. Now I am connected. I am connected to my remote user. Okay, in this case, I am I connected through a regular user, and now I am the root user. A O K Bingo Bango Bosch. Cool. So now I'm in, I am connected remotely to Rocky too. No big of a deal, pretty simple, pretty nice. So if you want to, if you are stubborn enough and you want to allow, okay, let me show, let me explain what I'm, what I'm doing. I, I'm typing exit and the exit will just log out from the remote root to the remote student. And I'm still on Rocky 2. If I type exit again, I am back to Rocky 1 and the session was completely closed off. So if you are stubborn enough and you want to allow the root user to connect, you just not go to the, the machine you want to connect to. You edit a file called etc ssh sh ssh d underscore config. Okay, this is for the configuration of the daemon server. Diamond. Some people call it diamond, some people call it daemon. 
you find um, this section. It doesn't really matter where you put it, but I like to put it here. You just you, you just type permit root login. Yes, you save, re you restart, and you should be able to allow the root user. I'm going to put this as a comment, but if you want to actually apply this, you save the file. I can show you. Just save it. You do systemctl, restart, uh, sshd, and now the root can connect using the root. I will show you. I don't want to keep this as is, but I will show you anyways. And I'm successful. Okay. I want I want to go back to where it was. I do prefer it as it was. I'm going to find this. I'm going to comment it this comment this out. I will restart it. And now, even though I'm putting the right password, I won't be able to, to log in because there we go. Root is not allowed to log in again. Cool. Pretty simple. Now. Uh, SSH is also used to, to support protocols that are called uh, that are SCP secure, for secure copy and R or RSync for remote synchronization. So these two protocols are used to copy files throughout the network using some using SSH to protect, which is nice. But we will discuss RSync and SCP on the RH134 course. So write and like and subscribe to get notified and get information about that. But I'm going to show you something else. So right now I am I'm going back to, to, to the student user. Okay. On both machines. So I have the same student user with the same ID on both machines. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to set up what we call the SSH keys. Okay. And SSH keys are uh, an alternate form of authentication. So instead of putting in the user's password, I'm going to pre-exchange a series of keys. Okay, I'm going to pre-exchange a series of keys. And these keys will allow me to pre-authenticate the user. So why is this useful? Because for example, there are some automations like Ansible or scripting that uh, if you, hint, you need to pause and type in the password or put the password on a configuration files, it can be time consuming, it can be less effective or more, even less secure. So what we do here is to pre-exchange keys from two machines. So let's say Rocky 1 usually connects to Rocky 2 using the student user. So it means that every time student, the student user from Rocky 1 connects to the student user of Rocky 2, it will not require the password. It will use the certificate, SSH certificate to, to, to do so. The certificate or the key, it's more, it's more correct to say key at this point, at this, uh, in this case. So the key can also be protected by a password. So the user's password doesn't have to be the same as protects the key. So we have several levels of security that can be revoked at any single time. So if Rocky 2 suspects that Rocky 1 is abusing the key, Rocky 2 can just delete the key and everything just goes away and you go back to square one. So to use the key, I'm going, to I'm going to generate the key on Rocky 1, then copy the key to Rocky 2, because the keys are usually not present by default. So how do I generate the key on Rocky 1? And I, oh, and before I forget, this is one way. So this will work from Rocky 1 to Rocky 2. It does not work on the, on the, on, in, in reverse unless you repeat the process in reverse. That I will show you. So let's first of all generate the key, SSH. Copy ID. I'm sorry. Um, Keygen, I'm sorry. This I, I was going one, one, one step further. Keygen. And I just need to follow along the prompt. Uh, so he's going to ask me where do I want to save my key. And uh, of course I can change the location. That's why he's giving me the prompt. I will not change the location because I'm happy with the default one. Because the default one is where everybody's going to look for it. So if by any means I come here five five months later, I would not remember I did this. I did the save this on a different location. It, it's just bad. So I'm going to save the key on, on its default location. It's going to ask me for the passphrase. Like I said, I can protect the key with a, with a password that doesn't have to be the same as a user's password. So as you know, the student password is student. 
which means that the key to the passphrase to protect the key can be something else, like the user's password is student, the key's passphrase can be potatoes or whatever the case, which is quite nice. I'm going to use it empty because uh, I, going, I want to make this as seamless as possible and only the key will guarantee the authentication. And as you know, this is very re reversible. As you can see, it's a RSA, so reversed Shamil and Edelman key with 3000 bits protection. This is kind of the minimum at, at, the, at, at today's days. And what I want here to use here, it's the public key. And I want to copy this public key to the Rocky 2. So I'm going to use a SSH, copy ID, minus I. And I'm going to copy it to the student user. And it's, I'm going to get the IP back because I forget. There we go. Okay, I'm going to type the student user's password one last time. Cool. Now, if I SSH like I did before, you will see that I will not be required to type in any password or anything else because the key actually did all the work for me. So I'm I'm on Rocky 2 successfully using the student user. Okay. But if you notice, I am on Rocky 2. But if I do the, the inverse connection from Rocky 2 to Rocky 1, you'll see that now I'm going to be prompted for the password, which is fine. But this is one way. I copied the key from Rocky 1 to Rocky 2. This seamless connection works in this direction. In the reverse direction, it will not work like this. Unless, unless I generate a key on Rocky 1 or Rocky, I'm sorry, unless I generate a key on Rocky 2 and copy it back to Rocky 1 and they both exchange the keys on in a bi-directional fashion, this would work. But by default, it's only one direction. Copy Rocky 1, copy to Rocky 2, and that's final. Now, if you are on Rocky 2 and you want to revoke this, you suspect that Rocky 1 is abusing this. You go to Rocky 2, to the user that copied the key, which is student. You have a, a hidden folder called SSH. You have there um, these files, authorized keys and authorized hosts, or not hosts. We're going to the authorized keys folder uh, file. And this, this contains the key for Rocky 1. This is only one, this is only one, one line. Only one line, only one, one line, only one line, but it's truncated because it does not fit in the screen. If multiple multiple hosts have copied keys to this Rocky 2, for example, Rocky 1 copied Rocky 2, Rocky 3 copied Rocky 2, Rocky 4 copied Rocky 2, you will see all the keys here. And this is just one line. Okay, I will do it, but I will not save it. We just need to go to this file and delete the line that you don't want to keep. So this now we, I will not I want I don't want to do this I don't want to save this but if you save the file this will just revoke the key for that specific host which is called Rocky One okay so now Rocky One is not anymore able to use the SSH key in order to connect to Rocky Two so this was chapter ten it's called configure and secure SSH for chapter RH one to one one to four. I'll like subscribe if you helps. Comment down below if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next one, guys.